Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our iOS development series, Tinkering with Table Views. Let's get started. Now, the last thing we have to do right now, just to get our custom table view cell working, is actually add it to our table view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my zip file for my custom table view, and over here in the attributes inspector, I'm gonna give it an identifier. So just like for our UI table view cell, we had the identifier cell, in our custom table view cell, I'm gonna go ahead and give it an identifier custom. Now going back to our view controller, over here we registered our UI table view cell, okay? We registered it over here. The real thing, however, is we don't need to register that anymore. Instead, we need to now register our custom table view cell. So the way we can do this is we can say self.tableView.register. And then instead of registering the cell class, we're gonna register the nib. So it's gonna ask for a UI nib. And now over here, there is a closing stuff for UI nib. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and type UI nib over here. And then in brackets, I'm gonna go ahead and get the autocomplete. So when creating a UI nib file, there is this sort of format over here. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste that format back down over here. Fantastic. So what is our nib name? Our nib name is going to be, whoops, let's go ahead and delete that. So our nib name is going to be whatever our zip file over here is called. So that's gonna be custom table view cell. And our bundle, go ahead and just put nil for now. We don't have to worry about it. Now it's gonna ask our cell reuse identifier. So our cell reuse identifier is the thing we just added to our table view cell, and that was custom. Fantastic. Now all we have to do is going back down to our cell. Let's go ahead and make this a let because it's a constant. We don't have to change it. We have a UI table view cell. So instead of doing that, we're gonna go ahead and delete that and set it equal to the new class we made, the custom table view cell. So all we're doing over here is we're saying that, hey, this cell variable that we've created, we want it to be a type of custom table view cell instead of UI table view cell. So go ahead and change this one as well. Fantastic. And now self.tableView.dq reusable cell with identifier. Our identifier is going to be custom instead of cell. All right, fantastic. Now that we've set our cell as the type of custom table view cell and gave it the identifier custom, we can now access the IB outlets we set for our custom table view cell class. So now what I can do is, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I can now say cell.item name is dot text is equal to um, banana. And now I can say cell.item count dot text is equal to count colon um, five, okay? And we don't have an image just yet, so we can leave the image for now. Let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens. Fantastic. So exactly, right now our table view cell height is not equal to the custom table view cell height that we have over here. So let's go back to our table view cell, figure out what the height is, and our height right now is 80. Going back to our main dot storyboard, we can set the height of every cell over here. So go ahead and select this, go to our attributes over here. Um, back to our ruler over here, we can go ahead and say row height is equal to 80. So we're not doing it automatic anymore. Make sure you set the row height equal to 80. Run this again, and let's take a look at our new table view. So let's give it a few seconds. Here it goes, shopping list has succeeded. Fantastic. So we don't have an image, but we do have banana and count five showing up, which is great. So hopefully you guys see how the custom cell works, okay? The core concept is that you design a custom cell, you create a custom cell class, you add the IB outlets, and then you can go ahead and use a custom cell for any cell in your table view. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to Google, and I'm gonna get a few images of some pictures. So I'm gonna search for banana, I'm gonna search for apples, and I'm gonna search for oranges, okay? So you can go ahead and do this as well. Um, just get a few images. So let's go ahead and get this one. I'm gonna go ahead and save image as over here. Um, I'm gonna call this banana, fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and go to images for apples and I'll go ahead and save one of these. Let's go ahead and do this one. So let's go ahead and save image as apple. And then last but not least, let's go to oranges and let's go ahead and save an orange image. So let's do this one. Fantastic, let's go ahead and save image, orange, great. Okay, so now we just saved three images and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add those three images to my Xcode. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Finder, Finder's over here, and I'm gonna go to my pictures and let's go ahead and find these three images, fantastic. What you're gonna do is you're gonna select these three images and drag them over right under the assets folder. So we're not putting them in the assets folder for now, we don't have to, it's okay. 
Fantastic, so we got our three images, apple, banana, and orange. Now one thing you'll notice is that two of them are JPGs, the third one is JPEG. That could cause an error for us, but let's go ahead and see. So we have apple, banana, and orange. Um, let's go back to our main not storyboard and actually custom table we sell just to see how it would look. So if we go ahead and add in an image, let's say apple. Okay, that's how apple looks. Let's go ahead and try orange. That's how orange looks and that's how banana would look, okay? So now that we have our three images, the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna create sort of three different arrays, okay? One array will be for the item name, one array will be for the item count, and one array will be for the item image name, okay? So going back to our view controller, let's go ahead and create three variables. So we can make these let actually. So let item name, item name is equal to, it's gonna be an array, and then each item, so apple, orange, and banana, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let item count. So how many of each do we have? So I'm gonna say we have four apples, we have 10 oranges, and we have three bananas, okay? And then we're gonna have our image name, so image name. And our image name, I'm gonna go ahead and copy exactly as it's given, so apple.jpg. Notice how mine are lowercase and it's also dependent on the extension. So banana.jpg and then we have orange.jpg. Now one thing you guys could have done is you could rename your apple, banana, and orange to fit the capitalization that I have over here. That way you can just use the item name array for your image name. Again, that's one thing you could potentially do. But fantastic. So now we have our sort of database created of the item name, item count, and item or image name. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set that over here. So for every cell in our table view, the item name dot text should be equal to our item name array, item name array. And then to access a position, remember square brackets, and we're gonna pass in index path dot row. Index path is basically the path of the current row it's on. Again, it's a parameter that's in the function that we can use. Index path dot row returns you from zero to your number of rows in your table view, what row we're talking about. So for the first row, index path dot row is gonna be zero, and putting in zero for our table view will get us the first value, apple for apple.jpg, okay? Item count on text is gonna give us, again, the exact same thing. Count is gonna be equal to item count index path dot row. And then last but not least, we have our image. So cell dot image name, sorry, cell dot image, uh, image view, okay, dot image, is gonna be equal to an UI image. So we're gonna go ahead and say UI image named, or it might be string, let's go ahead and see what the closure is. We're gonna go ahead and say it's going to be named string, fantastic. So cell.imageView.image equals UI image name some string, and our string in this scenario is going to be our image name array, and then index path dot row. So over here, we're gonna go ahead and say image instead of image view. That's on me guys, sorry about that. Go ahead and run this now and hopefully we should go ahead and see the three images in the proper size. Let's give it a few seconds, fantastic. So this is our shopping list. We now have our images, we have our labels, we have our count working, this is fantastic. So this is the core fundamental of a table view with a custom table view cell, okay? All we did is we created our own custom table view cell in a zip file. We attached it to a class and then we called it in our table view. Fantastic job guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.